Hey girls and guys, welcome back. This is Windows Fundamentals Part 1. Task 1. Click your Start Machine button plus your Attack box. Once it's loaded, you can click here, hit Enter. If you have a look, you have a WinFun tab. If I click on it, this will load up the Windows terminal required for this task. There it is. And if I click on THM, that's my attack box. For those of you who want to log in using RDP, this is how you go about it. Select Remina from the top left, add new connection, and now you can see it's similar to the screenshot of RDP login on the left. Type in the server IP address as seen in the screenshot. The user is administrator. The password is let me in one two three exclamation mark don't forget to scroll down and change the color depth hit connect accept the certificate task 2 windows editions windows is the most dominant system out there and because of this it's the most targeted by hackers windows xp was popular Vista was a nightmare, 7 and 8 were short-lived and problematic, then came Windows 10 in both Home and Pro. The current version of Windows OS for servers is Windows Server 2019 and has been used for the attached virtual machine. Task 3, Desktop GUI or Graphical User Interface. Typically you enter valid account credentials like username and password to log in to the Graphical User Interface. Great screenshot of Windows GUI highlighting the components that make up the graphical user interface. The screenshot has been color highlighted in red and numbered 1 to 7 for you to follow along or easily find the components on the screen. There you can see they're all around the screen. First is the desktop. This is where you find shortcuts to programs, folders and files. You can change the desktop look and feel to your liking. If you right click anywhere on the desktop, here you can see identical to the screenshot. If you click on display settings. There you can see all the settings similar to the screenshot provided where you personalize things. If I go back out and right click again and go to personalize, this is where you can change backgrounds, colors, fonts, etc. The start menu is the bottom left corner. I think everybody knows the start menu in Windows. See the screenshots are similar. It's best to just try and follow along, clicking to find what you see in the screenshots. Make sure you understand where these locations are in the Windows system and be familiar with them. Shows recently added apps, programs at the top. This is where you can pin or unpin programs and files and folders to start menu. If you right click on a file or folder, this is where you can see you can unpin or pin items to that start menu I mentioned. Taskbar. 
some components are enabled by default if you right click on the taskbar there you can see you get taskbar settings so I'm I right clicked on the bottom taskbar and that's where it pops up if I opened up Google Chrome anything that or any program that's opened up will be visible or shown along in the taskbar right now you don't see Chrome at the bottom in my taskbar but once it's loaded up you will see there you go Chrome is opened and you can see now it's in my taskbar at the bottom as in the screenshot your notification area which is in the bottom right of the window screen this is where date time are displayed if I right click in the notification area there's my taskbar settings and this is where you can change colors like you've seen I've done to this bright pink or themes and fonts your questions I'm sure you'll be able to find the answers I'll give you a clue where I found one of mine where I struggled if you right click in the bottom right corner you will find an action center which you should open Task 4, the file system used in modern Windows is new technology file system or simply NTFS. Before NTFS there was FAT16 and FAT32. You still see FAT partitions in USBs and micro SDs. NTFS is a journaling file system. To see what file system your Windows is using, right click the C drive and select properties. And clicking File Explorer, this PC, right clicking C Drive, select Properties, and there you can see File System is in TFS. On NTFS, you can set permissions that grant or deny access to files and folders. These permissions are Full control, modify, read and execute, list folder contents, read and write. How to view permissions. Right click the file, select properties, then the security tab. If I right click, and select properties and then the security tab here you can see the group and usernames where you can select the user computer or group whose permissions you want to view alternate data streams ADS is a file attribute specific to NTFS ADS allows files to contain more than one stream of data. PowerShell gives you the ability to view ADS for files. When you download a file from the internet, there are identifiers written into ADS to identify that the file was downloaded from the internet. Task 5. Windows and System32 folders. Your Windows operating system is normally found in the C Windows folder. Environment variables store information about operating system environment. This includes operating system path, number of processes used, and location of temp folders. Try to follow along with the screenshots on the left and match it up in your terminal. 
System 32 holds important files critical for the operating system. Proceed cautiously when interacting with this folder. Accidentally deleting files or folders in System 32 can render Windows inoperational. Many of the tools covered in Windows Fundamentals reside within the System32 folder. Task 6 User Account Profiles Permissions On Windows you'll find two types of user accounts, Admin and Standard User. The user account type determines what action the user can perform. Admin is root, can add users, delete users, modify settings, etc. A standard user can only make changes to files and folders attributed to that user and cannot perform system level functions like installing programs. You currently logged in as the administrator. Click the start menu, type other user, you can see it's the same as the screenshot, if you click on other users, there you can see it says try hack me. You can change account types and remove them. There you can see, if you click on it, you get the selection drop-down to change the account type. User and Group Management. Right-click on the Start menu. Click Run. Right-click on the Start menu, click Run, and then type in lusrmgr.msc and hit OK. Shows you two folders. You can see the user and group on the right-hand side. If you click on the groups, you'll see the names of the local groups, along with a brief description of each group. <coughs> Excuse me. Each group has permissions set to it. The questions. I'm going to go to users. The try hack me. You should be able to see your first answer. And what groups I'm going to show you the members of. And there's your first two answers already. The third and fourth answers. Follow through. Click on Guest. Select Properties. And there's your final answer. Task 7. User Account Control. Most home users are logged in as the administrator. This elevated privilege increases your risk of compromise as it's easier for malware to infect the system. UAC by default does not apply for built-in local admin accounts. UAC is there to protect the local user since the user account can make changes to the system. The malware would run in the contents of the logged-in user. Here's a note, user account default doesn't apply to the built-in local admin. In this example, I'm just going to right-click on Wireshark, go to the security tab, 
so you can see the groups, users and file permissions that are set and in other words for this example of logging in as a standard user versus admin you can basically see by the example on the left in the screenshots that the Wireshark has a green arrow on it and if your standard user logged in it's got like a blue and yellow little flag so when you logged in as admin you'll have a little green arrow on it and when you're a standard user you'll have the blue yellow flag displayed on top of the Wireshark emblem Task 8, Settings and Control Panel. These are primary locations to make changes. Control Panel has been the go-to location to make system changes. But now it's the Settings menu. To open Settings, click the gear icon. The bottom left or further up under Server Manager, type Control Panel in order to open it up. Same screenshots on the left as mine. Both control panel and settings can be accessed from the start menu. Control panel is where you access more complex settings and actions. Sometimes you can start in settings and end up in the control panel. Click Start, Settings, Network. If I have a look at the screenshot, then I must go to Change Adapter. There you can see Ethernet, like the example screenshot. And if you click on start and just type wallpaper and hit enter there's your settings for backgrounds themes fonts task 9 task manager this provides info about applications and processes running on the system To access Task Manager, right click in your taskbar. Taskbar opens in a simple view, it won't show you much. If you click on more details, let me change mine, there you go. Same as the screenshot, and if you click on more details, the view changes. Task 10, Conclusion. This was a generic overview. In future models, we'll cover Windows Folder, Management Console, Security Tools, Defender and Firewalls. Thank you for watching.